Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for October 12th, Monday, which is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving Day. I'm guessing plenty of people didn't celebrate it today, probably over the weekend, but um, we celebrated it here despite being in uh, Jammu and um, I think that it's interesting, different families approach Thanksgiving differently. Um, we had uh, our, our friend's family who's actually hosting us here, who's given us this apartment. <laughs> um, they, they came over for dinner, and so we spent the day cleaning the house and cooking for them. And... Um, when they came, they asked, what is the ritual? What is the ritual of Thanksgiving? And um, everyone approaches it a little differently. Uh, Canadian Thanksgiving tends to be about the meal, a kind of harvest festival like Pongal or any other um, with a certain set of foods that your family tends to prepare most years and so that's what we told them that the meal is the ritual um, but of course the ritual itself is actually to give thanks um, and to express gratitude but in some ways, it's actually a bit difficult um, if you want to think of Thanksgiving as a festival or as a ritual. Um, it is largely internal. There isn't, there isn't a, a big ceremony in any families that I know of making an external uh, show of your feelings of gratitude. Um, some <clears throat> some families I know will go around the table at dinner and people will express gratitude verbally. Um, but I actually think that for many it is much more valuable to actually take a solitary minute um, to work with uh, gratitude and feelings of thanks, thoughts of thanks. And so that was actually how I spent uh, the day yesterday. It was trying to go over those, those feelings and those thoughts. I think it's very easy, if you do this for, for a while, <laughs> more than a few minutes, um, and you can do it while you're doing other things to think about what you're thankful for. It's easy to come up with the, the standard things, right? Um, I'm, I'm thankful for everything that I have, for my position in life, for um, the opportunities that I've had, and for the people that I've met, for the family life that I had growing up and that I have now um, for the different work environments that I've been in, different schooling environments, um, even the, the town that I grew up in, um, the same as, as any town or city someone might grow up in. It's very easy to take that for granted when you're a child and then when you're an adult and you see all the sorts of other environments that a person grows up in, it, it, it's, it's often striking how much a person has in their childhood. Um, and uh, a few of those things for me are, um, we had a large field, a uh, grassy field, beside our school with a full-length track um, 
we had a lot of space for baseball, for outdoor events. We had a huge gymnasium. We have multiple ice rinks, which isn't uncommon in Canada, but um, the rest of the world doesn't usually have <laughs> um, multiple ice rinks for such a small town. Uh, we had a skating and hockey rink and we had a curling rink. Have, we still have. Um, there's a nice large park. When I was a kid, there was a little mini golf even and a swimming pool in the summertime. This is quite a lot. This is really quite a lot for um, for children to have and so many different opportunities. Um, and it is funny because you think back to when you were a child and you said, take all these things for granted. <laughs> um, but they're quite wonderful and also obvious. So a person goes through these obvious things first. Um, one's own health, the health of one's family, um, the family one has opportunities, the life one's lived. Um, I'm looking at the books on my shelf <laughs> and thinking how many opportunities I've had for learning and literacy. Even now I'm taking um, courses as an adult. This is available and possible and possible only because we essentially have video phones now, um, non-standard, but um, they work most of the time. And as I went through my day yesterday, I found myself thankful for some peculiar things. Um, I, I found myself really thankful for being in a place where the weather changes. Um, it's nice to be here in Jammu. It, the weather was very, very hot when we first arrived and now things are cooling off and it will get cold. Um, it doesn't freeze here usually, but cold enough and there's no indoor heat <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so as we transition from the summer months into the winter months, we get a real feeling of autumn. And I think that that's perhaps part of the reason why Thanksgiving is held at this time. On one hand, obviously it's a harvest festival, so all the harvest is coming off now or has largely finished by now um, from the fields, but also from gardens. So um, back home in Canada, everyone has um, whatever bounty is coming to them they've they've harvested that and the other half of Canadian Thanksgiving which is giving thanks for the previous year I mean if you're a religious person you give thanks to God if you are not then you're just giving thanks generally to other people um, to nature maybe <laughs> to um, to your environment and your circumstances and this time of year is particularly enjoyable in Canada. Um, it, it's a time of year when you really feel change. And there's, there are long stretches of um, Canadian summer and winter both uh, can be long seasons and the autumn and the spring are, are fairly, they're brief transitionary seasons. And so you get this, this narrow window to really enjoy the change. And you can. <laughs> um, and it's easier to be thankful for it when uh, it's made explicit. So I was thankful for the weather, perhaps the seasons. Um, 
but I am also given some special circumstances here. We, we were effectively trapped in, well, I would say a guest house, but I mean, if, essentially a hotel <laughs> in Himachal Pradesh when the pandemic hit, which meant that we, we were paying quite a lot of money for very little space and it wasn't our own space. Thankfully, we could cook. There was a shared kitchen, but the shared kitchen itself was quite dangerous because you have no idea um, who else is coming in there, who's touched things. Sometimes you had to share the space with other people. And um, back, back when we were there, um, <laughs> back in May and June, um, it, re it really felt like we were forever on the verge of maybe we'll go to Canada, maybe we'll go to Canada. And the difficulties of traveling, um, I mean, in general, uh, for an Indian citizen, it's not necessarily easy ever to travel to North American countries. Um, but under the circumstances of the pandemic, even more so. And so when our friend offered that, offered to us uh, this opportunity to come to Jammu, uh, we were quite happy to take up the offer. And it's been really perhaps more than we deserve we, we have um we have a flat to ourselves we have a beautiful view of the river um and it's funny how quickly a person slips back into that same old mode we had when we were kids oh yeah everybody has <laughs> everybody has a curling rink a few blocks from their house. Everybody has a huge football field. Everybody has a huge gymnasium. This is just normal. And so quickly you begin to take for granted what's around. So we really do. We have a beautiful view of the mountains of Vaishna Devi and of the river in front of the mountains and the fields uh, all around the river. And um, it pains me to admit, but there have been days that we have not even gone on the balcony. Oh, we, oh we're so busy. I just drink our coffee and sit down and start working um, as soon as we've had our breakfast. And it, it's funny to spend the day cleaning the house and um, making it presentable <laughs> for guests who are coming for dinner. Um, that some of the things I found myself thankful for, grateful for, over the course of the day were very strange. All, some of them almost felt wrong. And so the one example I would think of is, um, is my grandmother. And of course, everybody is thankful for their grandmothers, assuming their grandmothers are kind and sweet people, as most grandmothers are. Um, my grandmother on my mother's side of the family, she had an extremely difficult um, early adulthood, late childhood. She, um, she worked as a servant in other people's homes. And I'm not thankful that she went through that experience at all, of course. Um, 
if the past were possible to change, I, I would want nothing more than for her life to have been um, better in any way possible. But one can only really be grateful for, thankful for, those things which actually are. Uh, you can't... Gratitude is perhaps in direct opposition <laughs> to uh, wishful thinking. So if you want something else, you're craving something else, you desire something else, then what is there? Then you are not grateful. Um, and so these two, these two emotions, and they're fairly you know, coarse-grained, high-level emotions, they're reified emotions, something you can point to and say, ah, oh, yes, I'm feeling this emotion. Um, they, they exist on the surface on either end of a spectrum. Um, they compete with one another. And so in that respect, I am thankful in a strange way for the path that my grandmother took and then the path that my mother took and then the path that I took, which led me to know <laughs> how to clean a bathroom. And this is, a, this is funny. Right, because so because my grandmother was, um, she worked in in homes uh, where a bathroom must be perfect. Then I've been given instruction from my mother as to how to clean a bathroom perfectly, um, and it's quite funny because I've spoken to friends before who. I would say especially here in India, I, I think particularly in India when it comes to comforts, um, there are many more here for someone who is you know, upper middle class, upper class, whatever categorization you want to give um, to people who have other people come into their homes and work. Um, That's a, that's a very particular kind of comfort, which even the, even the wealthy of most of the world don't, <laughs> they don't have this. Um, but many people in India have um, access to, uh, to that kind of comfort. And when I talk to, to either my friends um, in Canada or the United States about uh, about the idea of cleaning a bathroom and maybe they do it but they they may not have an, a lot of appreciation for it or if I talk to my friends in India um, not all my friends but some of my friends in India who uh, who have not really done it <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have a number of friends who haven't really done it. Um, it's quite funny because be, this is again uh, like the river and the curling rink. Something someone takes for granted so easily. Um, if something has been taken care of for you, the moment something has been taken care of for you, it's, it's almost immediate. It's so easy to take, take something for granted. Um, but I've, I've actually had these conversations where I've said, oh, the, you know, the skill of cleaning a bathroom. <laughs> and my friends will say, oh, is it? I know how to clean a bathroom. Like, how? Of course, everyone knows how to clean a bathroom. <laughs> Um, 
And no, everyone does not. Um, there is a real skill involved and there is a real understanding of what you're doing involved. Um, there is tenacity involved. If you are ever tasked with cleaning a shared bathroom, sometimes um, th there are components which may require a lot of patience on your part. Uh, we helped clean last year in Sikkim. We helped clean residences and bathrooms at uh, the Vipassana Center there. That's just, uh, we were volunteering like anyone else. If you go to a Vipassana Center, the only people cleaning bathrooms are volunteers um, like you and I, um, just volunteering their time. So the state of the bathrooms is uh, the la whoever was there last, <laughs> they left them in that state, good or bad. And the, um, the bathrooms were not, they were not particularly dirty, um, but some construction work had happened and there were paint splatters and, um, and concrete lumps on tiles and so we took it upon ourselves to scrape those off and um, sometimes you'll come across a bathroom that has really calcified rust or um, other stains that you really need to work at it can become exhausting i've i've cleaned bathrooms where i've had to switch arms <laughs> my right arm gets too tired scrubbing the rust so I, I switched to my left arm and I'd use that for a while and the idea that someone who's only cleaned a bathroom you know a few hundred times in their life knows how to clean a bathroom is quite amusing to me um, they don't <laughs> know how to clean a bathroom and so as I was cleaning our bathrooms yesterday I thought I'm, I'm really very thankful for this strange chain and I mean it's always a chain like this it's always something it seems really inconsequential that oh okay so my my grandmother learned how to clean bathrooms this way and my mother then learned and taught me how to clean bathrooms it's like these details of who taught you how to floss your teeth who taught you how to read who taught you how to ride a bicycle who taught you how to swim um, that in particular um, the, the holidays of my childhood the important holidays of my childhood Thanksgiving and Christmas they tend to have similar messages Thanksgiving is more internal so it's okay I'm being grateful for the things that I have for the way that things are and Christmas is supposed to be more external that I I express um, express the gratitude I try to help those who are less fortunate um, and express love to my family to my friends at Christmas time And I, th I think that if, if we look at the, the space between these two holidays, um, and where one begins and one ends, if we draw backward from, uh, from the external of Christmas, and if we think about the people who have fewer opportunities, people who lack resources or they, uh, they lack teachers, um, 
not necessarily lack money. I think that that's always how this is framed, that, oh, those less fortunate you think of at Christmas, and so that, that's always the poor. I mean, obviously the poor, um, whoever happens to be poor at any given time, uh, they are less fortunate. But that is not the only kind of misfortune. Um, there are all sorts of other shapes and forms to misfortune. Um, and one of the most severe is to lack quality teachers, patient teachers, um, to have someone who's willing to teach you what, whatever skill. It, do, it doesn't really matter because if you enjoy it or if it is necessary, <laughs> you may... You may enjoy playing the trombone, but cleaning a toilet is necessary at some point in the week. Um, that, that to have someone in your life who will teach you these things repeatedly and to make it meaningful to you that that is um, something to be truly grateful for. And that those truly less fortunate are those without teachers. And that the, such people exist. They have few opportunities or they, maybe they have um, less in terms of finances. That's also possible. Or they live in a country where education isn't valued um, but this, this really matters quite a lot. And so this was kind of my meandering <laughs> train of thought yesterday was regarding how one learns and how one is taught and what one learns and acquires throughout one's life. And I've spoken before about gratitude and how gratitude is actually, um, it is an emergent quality of meditation that if you sit and you try to meditate, if you do meditate, that gratitude will will kind of erupt of its own accord. And um, when I sort of positioned these two things, so uh, an envy or desire, craving for something that is not there, wishful thinking, if you have that on one side and if you have gratitude on the other, these two things are, are mutually exclusive. And meditation doesn't say grow gratitude. It, it doesn't say that you need to cultivate this in yourself or imbue yourself with this. That's what Thanksgiving Day is for. <laughs> so if you want to do gratitude journaling or if you want to simply wait and do it once a year on Thanksgiving, cultivation of gratitude is a perfectly valuable thing. It's a very valuable thing. Um, but to really get it embedded in yourself is for it to emerge of its own accord. So for gratitude to surface. Um, and the, the fertile ground for gratitude to grow in is this 
present moment awareness. And I think this is, this is dangerous terminology, right? Because um, people are tempted to think that the present moment is something that they have a handle on now. <laughs> that you already know what is the present moment. Um, but uh, we can maybe discuss this tomorrow. This is gratitude and its relationship to meditation um, can be an additional topic above and beyond Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving is really, um, it isn't entirely It isn't entirely a, a topic of or about meditation. Uh, it's related to. <laughs> but we can uh, we can leave um, the rest of the gratitude conversation for tomorrow. Uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves. And in the case of those who are celebrating Thanksgiving. Surely you have already taken good care of those around you. So um, I will talk to you tomorrow about gratitude. Okay, goodbye.